Do you deal with knee pain or joint pain while you bowl? Or is this something that you're concerned about as you're bowling more and more games or perhaps getting a little bit older like we all are? This is a common concern that I hear from a lot of bowlers. And remember that bowling is a sport. So as we're throwing this big old rock anywhere from maybe 12 to 15 or even 16 pounds down the lane repeatedly, it can take a toll on our body. I have some quick tips coming up next on how you can preserve your knees and your joints and keep your body the healthiest you can for the longest amount possible for bowling. Coming up next. So there was a study done a handful of years ago with sports science and pro bowler Sean Rash. And what they found was when he was sliding to the line, there was a split second where he was putting up to 1,600 pounds of force or exertion on his knees. Now, pro bowlers typically bowl a lot more games than the average bowler, but this is something that we all should be aware of and all be working on keeping our knees and our joints healthy, our bodies healthy for as long as possible because bowling is a forever sport and we want to be able to do it as long as possible. If you are having chronic knee pain or joint pain or any pain, you should talk to your doctor just to make sure there's nothing else going on, that there's not an injury that you need to address. Bowling is a sport. So guys, we should be treating it like a sport. We should be doing our warm-ups and our cool downs before league, after league, before a tournament, after a tournament or a practice session, there can be different exercises that you can do that work for you lunges, making sure that you're not going over the knee when you're doing a lunge, but even things like jumping jacks and getting the body warmed up, even walking. I have dogs, so I walk my dogs all the time. You can do sit-ups and push-ups and different things like that, lifting light weights, doing leg exercises, things like that can really help to support our overall health, maybe even keeping the weight down, which is also important to keep our joints healthy and keeping us stronger on the lanes longer. <laughs> When you are releasing the ball, look down. Where is your slide foot or your plant foot pointing? It should be pointing at the pins, guys. A lot of times people kind of slide or change or hop and all of a sudden we're pointing towards the gutter or towards maybe the 10 pin and we wanna make sure that we are not twerking our knee. We're keeping it in that forward position. A good drill to make sure that you're correcting that or making sure you're doing the right thing with your foot pointing forward is the one step drill. I have a video that I did on that and touched on that. I'll, I'll link that below. And along those lines, making sure that you're walking as straight as possible towards the pins. I understand that people have drift and that's okay, that's normal. But one way that you can do that in practice, check with your bowling center ahead of time, is to put painter's tape, making a little lane and kind of watching where you're releasing, where your slide foot is landing, the direction that you're walking in, making sure that you're as straight as possible and keeping track of that in your approach. <music> consider wearing a knee brace. I know several bowlers who do this. A lot of two-handers seem to put a lot more pressure on their knees and they seem to want to do this more and putting, protecting that area. This can be something that's, you know, elastic and athletic brace. I'll link one down in the description so you guys can kind of check out what I'm talking about, but find something that fits well for you, for your budget also. They're usually not that expensive and also works for your style of bowling. <laughs> After you bowl a lot of games, make sure that you rest. Ice and heat could be something that you might want to apply and alternate because that could be something if you have a little inflammation, but in general, we shouldn't have pain when bowling. Again, if we're bowling a lot of games and tournaments and things like that, we might start to feel some fatigue in those areas. So ice, heat, and rest can really pay dividends. <laughs> making sure that you're not stopping too far before the foul line. You want to get close to the foul line so you're not going over the knee and that puts a lot of pressure. So one way that you can do that is go to the foul line, turn your back to the pins. If you're a four step approach person, then walk normally four steps and another half. That half is for that slide step, okay? So four and a half steps, turn around and that should be your distance. The same thing for a five step approach. Go to the foul line, turn your back to the pins, walk away from the pins going five and a half steps and that should be typically where you should start on the lanes. And the last tip that I have is making sure that you're putting proper nutrition into your body. That could be quality supplements. Keeping the joints as healthy as possible, you wanna look at taking in quality protein. I have a protein shake every morning. I love it for nutrition, for fueling me, and for a lot of things, just keeping my body healthy. Glucosamine, 
turmeric. Vitamin D has been shown to help with bones and joints. Omega-3 fatty acids are really a great supplement to be taking in for inflammation. I'll put a link below to what I use and what I suggest. So that's what I have for you guys. I would love to hear below your comments about knee issues that you dealt with or that you overcome and how you overcame them, what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you, and ways that you keep your body healthy on the lanes. If you got something from this video, guys, I appreciate you liking the video. Go ahead and put your comments below, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon if you want to see more bowling tips, videos, tricks like that. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.